Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can. Just read out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. And the Celtics go up 2 0 with another win in TD Garden. I don't remember what the score was. Again, these are initial reactions. I don't look at no stats. I just go off how I felt in the game. And hey, a lot of people was telling me this is not the series that the Celtics are going to troll in game two. Got to get this to you, man. Because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it, but. I would I would much rather be wrong in that instance. So Celtics go up 2-0. The first thing you see in this game is Jalen Brown, bro. Like he had 40 points. He only had two assists, which I thought was kind of low. I thought he had some more assists than that. But all around, bro, this might like this is one of his best games. And then it happens in the playoffs. And on a night where Tatum struggled a lot in the first half, we'll talk about that later. Of course, I don't like to compare them. I think Celtics fans they compare them a lot in their teammates. So I don't like to like. I don't like to do that, but if you've been around this channel, you have heard me say that the difference I think between Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, of course, is the athleticism, right? Jalen is the more superior athlete, but as far as his mentality, and he's a more deliberate score than Tatum, which means that he will attack a lot more than Tatum does on some nights, right? And it's not just attacking, but it's just not settling, right? Tatum, a lot of times, he's in love with that pull up three. If he scores twice, he'll take a pull of three just to see if he's hot, right? Brown, a lot of times, will have five, six straight possession of him going at somebody, making them defend. And he's he's one of the best tough shot makers in this game, bro. And it's, it's, it's not even a question. And he creates so much space, again, with his athleticism on that jumper, those fadeaways, the footwork, the drives, everything, bro. He was just amazing. And again, I talked about his all-around game. Siakam had like 30 points and he was hitting every shot i think he might have shot like over 60 percent but there was a time where in the midst of siakam going off Jalen brown took the challenge of guarding him and i think tatum also took that when the celtics um had him at the five and i think the brown thing was before that but he was like hey no he's scoring i'm taking this assignment and the pacers just did not look like the pacers i know tyrese highland burton um he came out in about that third quarter he didn't return to the game but they just look slower. The Celtics made them look slower. I feel like, again, we got some bench production. It took for Luke Cornette to get hurt to get some more guys into the rotation. I didn't think Luke was as bad as he was in game one, but he got hurt. And then we seen O'Shea Brissett, man. It's just, it's so beautiful to have somebody else that can just switch. Like, again, all of us have been begging for Tillman solely because he can switch on the defensive side of the ball against a team that plays fast and that has multiple ball handlers and they thrive on the opposing team having to close out multiple times in a possession luke cornett is a drop big he's good in that aspect but he's not great switching and playing this fast pace he did a better job of that at game two but then he got hurt and o'shea Brissett stepped in and it was just seamless bro he did not have to shoot the ball because that's the one thing you're not you're like eh, i don't know about the spacing he didn't even have to shoot a three today right he he, he did not have to hit a three he just played his ass off Offensive rebounds, hustling, switchability, just moving his puppies, bro. He was amazing in this game. And in my last video, I also said I didn't think this would be a good matchup for Sam Hauser. I still don't think it is, but I also said that I didn't think he was going to play a lot because he just was so ineffective in game one. And again, the speed of the Pacers w was affecting Sam Hauser. They were closing out on the thing that he does best, which is shoot threes. And in this game, he did not hit a three, but Sam Hauser was amazing, bro. So I would take that L. Like Sam Hauser was amazing. And he, I don't even think he had a three tonight. He had two that was rolling in and out. Like he was, he had some that was online, but he just did not hit him. But it did not matter at all. Again, the, he brought the same thing that O'Shea Brissett uh, brought. Defense, the hustle, offensive rebounding, coming out of that corner, getting us offensive rebounds, extra possessions. Like he was amazing. Like in every other aspect, except for the thing he does best. If Sam Hauser, if his threes would have dropped in this game, this probably would have been his best all around game, given how he played on both sides and the magnitude of the game. He was amazing. He showed effort. He had multiple plays of just sticking his nose in against taller defenders and just being a great hustle guy. Pritchard was also good in this game. Our bench, we got three great rotations from three bench guys. So I'll hats off to the bench. Y'all might be getting the video. 
I ain't gonna say too much. Again, Drew Holiday, amazing this game. I think he had a double double. Uh, ten assists was the last time I heard the assist counter. He just does everything, bro. He's strong defensively. You already know what you're getting out of him, but offensively, he's gonna hit those threes. He's gonna hit timely threes, right? He's clutch. When the Pacers go on that run to come back into the game, you can count on Drew Holiday to hit a clutch shot, right? And the playmaking, man, the playmaking has come to fruition in the playoffs. We didn't see a lot of it in the regular season because, of course, you got Derek White, then you got some Tatum in there, and Drew was just that guy that's sacrificing his touches. But in the playoffs, man, he has been everything we wanted from him in all facets of the game, points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, everything, everything. And then Derek White. We got Derek White going from three. Last time I checked, he had 19 points. Hopefully, he finished over 20. But again, him too, just doing everything defensively again shoe nose threes he needs to be aggressive in this series he needs to be aggressive every game for the celtics like he is our third best scorer without chris Porzingis, and he's the guy that needs to pick up that slack of course Tatum and brown have to but with Porzingis gone we need Derek white we need drew holiday to pick up that slack scoring the ball and yeah the celtics just played much better defense in this game there was a point where the pacers did not score for like six minutes it was like a 20-0 run i didn't like that particularly because the Celtics were only up like 12 and then they ended the half only up six i think the offense just needs a lot more flow to it and our talent certainly helps our offense not having a lot of flow to it a lot of times but if you hold the pacers to zero points and you're on a 20-0 run man you got to be up like 15 and a half so i was a little skeptical of that i ain't gonna lie but so you got it done and you got to get one in indiana you have to get one in indiana don't come back 2-2 two -two. if you come back 2-2 two -two, i don't want you to come back <laughs> like get one in indiana we need one what else um yeah siakam was just insane bro like his his in-between game which is something i talked about i talked about the pacers their mid-range ability in my ecf preview they were the number one percentage team in mid-range right they shot i think 49 percent in the regular season in the mid-range tyler burton is a great mid-range shooter nimhar can shoot it tj mcconnell that's where he lives and siaka man the post moves the post phase he is a real calming presence when it comes to putting the ball in the basket and we got to find a way to contain him. I did like how we started off with Horford on Siakam and Jalen on Turner because Turner, again, has the ability to pick and roll and pick and pop. A really rare thing for a big, and he does it as well as anybody in those two aspects. And Horford was getting caught on those switches a lot of times. And in that drop coverage, Turner was just taking whatever he gave him. And he had 18 points in that first half. And in this game, Turner had a much less impactful game than he did in game one. So that was good to see. And as far as Tatum, I won't talk about him for too long because it's always one, but anybody that just that just directly goes to his shooting splits is not watching Tatum. Or or they don't understand Tatum. There is one thing that in any game, if he's shooting 100% from the field or he's shooting 0% from the field, there's one thing that you can always look at and tell if tatum is there and it's his energy dead ass did not sprint the whole first half i don't think i saw him sprint there was probably a couple fast breaks where tatum sprinted other than that he was walking and jogging the entire first half at the end of the half he didn't even want the basketball he was just like nah go like no effort getting blown by defensively getting scored on people that shouldn't be scoring on him anything bro he didn't want to he didn't want any part of this game in the first half the second half he picked up a little bit also, he picked up his scoring. He got to his spots in the mid range, and then still, it's just sometimes he just has to shoot a pull up three. I don't get it, but he got to his spots in the second half. I think he had 19 points on seven for 12. Like, that's who he needs to be. And I still don't think in the second half his energy was where it should have been, but it was much better in the second half. The first half was just abysmal. And again, it's not the shooting. He was not there as a person. He is his persona, his mentality was not there in the first half. It just wasn't. Walking, jogging, getting blown by, not being aggressive, all that shit. He and he got some good threes off. Like it was wide open threes. He missed like three in the first half. So again, it wasn't shooting. It was everything else. But that is the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and share any and everyone that you can. Just get out there a little bit more. And I will see you guys very soon. You might get another two vid day tomorrow. So I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna watch this game again about like two, three times to see what I can pull from it and give you guys some content. But again, I'll see you guys soon. And this is Nick. Peace.